Welcome, boils and ghouls, to the Halloween special of the Bomb Shelter. I'm your host. Oh, yeah. Crap, now I don't have names. Yeah. Uh-oh. Well, I'm, 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 I'm Jay I'm, McDowell. I'm Kevin Sh- Shum. There we go. He couldn't <laughs> remember his own name. <laughs> yeah. Yes, as I said, this is our little Halloween extravaganza. Yeah. It's uh, a little more uh, meaty because usually... Um, on our birthday months, we get to choose what we want to do. Yeah. And since my birthday month's in October, and we already do our, oh, anniversary, second anniversary yeah. of the show, and Halloween, and my birthday, so usually we do at least two. But yeah. due to circumstances beyond our control, yep. we are doing one. And I'm sure you're all just, you know, greatly disappointed by oh, this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when uh, I listen to this, I'm going to think, oh. Oh, I only get one. Oh. Hey, we could do a three-hour one, so then you know yeah. make up for it. I don't think I'll be awake through three hours. <laughs> I can't keep you awake through an hour of a movie. Yeah. So, what we're going to talk about this episode are um, a few different movies, and they all have one thing in common, and that would be the hoax from 1938 of the War of the Worlds broadcast by Orson Welles. Columbia Broadcasting System and its affiliated stations present Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the air in The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. Okay, so um, we're going to forego the usual trailers on these because a lot of these, well, all of them actually were TV movies, and I don't think any of them had Yeah, trailers. there may be somebody, somebody may have made some sort of little trailer for it, but I doubt there was actually a trailer for it. Yeah. Because they, yeah. that was sort of the point is that they were yeah, you, sometimes live. And... Yeah, the way they were presented, you weren't supposed to really know uh, what you were getting into. Yeah. Even though I imagine I, – I tried looking up the, the old TV guides and I could not find any information on these to see if they said like, uh, you know, such and such movie uh, mockumentary. Yeah. Or, you know, that they would have used that word. But like that. Yeah. Or, you know, fiction. You know, something like that. So I don't know. Um, at any rate, I told Kevin a few months ago to – he had some homework and he had to watch a few different movies. And he finally figured out the, yeah. the connection between all of them. The first one was a movie from 1977 yep. called Alternative 3. It was broadcast on, I believe, the BBC or – no, uh, not the BBC. Uh, it was something – I can't remember what it's called, but it's similar to – Yeah, it's a, a British – Anglia Television, that's yeah. it. Um, well, that's what it's produced by. I don't know if it was on a BBC. I'm not in Britain, people. Yeah. So at any rate, this movie has to do with uh, – it, it's – it was portrayed kind of as fiction, but it came off as a real uh, show it, because they used one of the current um, shows that was on. It was a, a science series called Science Report. Yeah. And they used that as the basis of this fictional story. Basically, the story is a lot of uh, brainiacs are disappearing in, yeah. in England and nobody can figure out why. And then it start. We start getting more pieces to the to the puzzle where yeah. uh, people know that, that you know scientists and specialists know that the planet's kind of doomed. Yeah, and they're looking for ways to uh, to get us off planet to protect the species. Yeah. And by doing this, they have three alternatives. And as the uh, this one gentleman in the movie he's interviewed says, the first two alternatives were really dumb. Yeah. But the third one was to uh, make the moon and Mars habitable for humans. And basically, we hadn't been told any of this. Yeah. Um, do, what do you remember from it? Um, it's... You know how my memory is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have trouble remembering the thing we just watched literally minutes before we started. Well, there we go. But yeah, there's – I mean just like what you said, people 
but the people dis uh, smart people disappearing. No one's really sure why. Yeah. Um, it's not ne necessarily noticed by the public at first. Yeah. But as the show goes on, it starts to seem more in intentional, maybe. Yeah. The, um. Yeah. That they're 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 calling people together for not calling, but gathering people together for this very specific purpose yeah. to try to colonize Mars. Yeah. And uh, they get it. Was it the astronaut? I can't remember what the astronaut's name was, but it was an American astronaut. A real astronaut, yeah. Um, he saw something. On, he was one of the last people on the moon, and he saw something there. Yeah. And, and so we get all this. Th there's a mystery tape. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, and you can't figure out. The, the, the people in the movie couldn't figure out how to access it. It just was static. It's, it's like static and some noise sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And then they figure out there's this special piece of equipment yeah. that they have to run it through, and it helps them to... It, like, decodes it. Yeah. Yeah. And so at the end of the movie, spoiler for a you know, 40-year-old movie. Yeah. At the end of the movie, you hear uh, Houston, uh, uh, you know, the space program. Yeah. Um, them, you know, saying, okay, we've landed on Mars. Yay. You know, successful. And this was in, like, the early 70s. Yeah. And... And there's video, and they show it, and then you know everybody's, and and it turned out that it's a jo it's a joint Soviet and yeah Soviet American, and American yeah. yeah, which was the other big thing because we were in the middle of the Cold War yeah. and supposed to be enemies, and they were actually working together, but then at the end you see at the bottom this thing moving through the dirt yeah, and then the movie it was ends. like Life on Mars yeah yeah, and the the way the movie was done it, it was. Supposed to have been released on April Fool's Day. Yeah. In 1977. But there was a strike of some sort and they wound up not showing it until June. Yeah. And so when people saw this, they thought it was real. Or a lot of people thought yeah. it was real. And a whole lot of, you know, it's still to this day, it's thought of as, oh, well, it's one of those where it is real. Yeah. That's what they want you to they think want is you, that they, it's not real. Yeah. The best way to trick people is to tell the truth and make them think that it's a yeah. joke and then yeah and just hide it in plain sight kind yeah. of thing and like i said to this day there are still people who you know think that we've been to mars yeah that, you know um but it did cause a bit of a of a kerfuffle um as did the second movie that i had kevin watch i had actually seen this when it um uh, was broadcast originally yeah it was a movie called uh special bulletin it was broadcast on nbc in March of 1983. Yep. And this movie, uh, basically these uh, nuclear scientists create their own nuclear bomb and yeah. threaten to blow up the uh, city of Charleston, South Carolina, if they're not given the, uh, Codes. Like the nuclear triggers yeah, yeah. Uh, for the U.S. arsenal. Uh, basically, they're trying to force a unilateral... Uh, downsizing of nuclear forces yeah. and you know to to totally stop using nuclear weapons and the show goes on um it's it's done as a a special bulletin like a new special bulletin yeah. and you see that you know the they're they're working trying to uh the government's trying to get these guys you know taken out and stuff and then it all fails, and at the end of the show, the nuke ac accidentally goes off, yeah. taking out uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Now, like I said, I saw this when it uh, when it was first aired, and I would have been eleven yeah. when it came out, and freaked out by nuclear weapons, yeah, and nuclear war. And I figured out within the first few minutes because I don't think I caught the very beginning when I, the one thing on most of these think all of them is that they're all preceded by a you know this isn't real this is dramatization yeah. blah, blah blah but what happens is people come in midway and they're like oh crap what's going on yeah and my first clue was the network is not nbc it's rbs yeah and i was like what's that you know, what's rbs i've never <laughs> yeah. heard of that and because at the time we only had three we had abc cbs and nbc yeah fox wasn't around yet and all the you know cw and all that so that clued me in. And then the fact that it, another trope of these is that things happen in, with ex, in accelerated time. Yeah. So 
like they it was during the day when it started and I'm watching this at night because it's on prime time yeah and then it goes into into nighttime and I'm like okay first of all I'm in California this is in South Carolina yeah so it should be dark bef- there before it is here yeah and then how is it dark when just you know at the last break it was daylight still yeah so that little thing clued me in but there were a lot of people that were freaked out by this also because like I said they came in midway and didn't quite get the full gist of what was going on yeah um what about you had you seen this I had never even I don't know if I even even heard of this one before okay um but yeah I think I think some of these I mean we'll we'll keep talking about a few more but some of these they get not that you aren't fooled by it, but no. I think some people are fooled by it if it's something they kind of worry about anyway. So if you're really worried about nuclear war, something mm-hmm. like this, because to me, I mean, this is, again, this is many, many years later. I'm watching it and thinking like, I don't think I could ever be tricked by yeah. this. Yeah. Watching you know? it now. It, it yeah. just looks, rid- it's like, this is clearly staged and it's clearly acting and, and all that. But I can totally imagine if, if this is something you were really worried about at the time and, mm. And you're watching it at the time. Nowadays, we have more. We can look back on all these things and kind of pick up on the. Well, and we have 24-7 news. So if something like yeah. this was going on. We would have known about it instantly. Yeah. Everything would have been shut down. And you would have been hearing just about yeah. this one thing. It would have on. been primetime Saturday night. Yeah. You know. Oh, hey, this is happening. Or yeah. it happened earlier today or yeah. whatever. So, yeah. And that that's. I We'll, we'll talk about it more when we. Uh, when we you know, get through all these. But I think that's part of the reason why you don't see so many of these anymore. Yeah. Is because it's a lot harder to... It would be pull. really hard to pull over. Although, that being said, that did come into play with the next movie. Yeah. Without warning. Yeah. It came out in 1994. Yeah. And it was run on CBS. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, trying to make this work. There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, October. October, October 30th, 1994. Oh, nice. This one was an almost – there are so many nods to the 1938 War of the Worlds yeah. in it that you know you know that's what they were going for. Yeah. Um, not just the fact they were trying to go for, you know, making this end of the world scenario look real, but that they were really, really trying to phone in, uh, you know, the ghost of, <laughs> yeah. of Orson Welles. Yeah. Uh, this one – it's one of my favorites. It starts off with as a movie called Without Warning. Yeah. Starring Lonnie Anderson. Yeah. And it starts off and it's like the husband's walking in on her. She's cheating. And, yeah, yeah. And you get a, it, all of a sudden this this special news bulletin break. Yeah. Uh, that an asteroid landed in uh, Wyoming. In yeah. In an unpopulated area. And I like, I like that. I like that trick or whatever they yeah or they'd use there where you're you're in the middle of watching something that looks like it could be something on at that time yeah possibly. because lonnie anderson is even given a yeah. credit in the movie so it's, you're you're thinking i'm watching a movie oh there's lonnie anderson i know who she is yeah you know. and, and i don't know how they how they sold it on tv you yeah know, coming up next you know was it coming up next lonnie anderson in, and yeah. without warning or was it you know i mean i know that they beforehand and probably at commercial breaks had to put you know this is just fiction yeah um it goes on though the movie starts up again yeah and then it goes for a couple minutes and there's another break yeah okay well there's been another uh, uh asteroid hit in france i believe it was france that sounds right yeah and then yeah france southern france and then they go back to the movie and then they come back and then that's it. You don't see the the without warning movie anymore. Yeah. Because another one hits in um, a remote area of China. Yeah. And in all three of these places, I mean, people were killed. But in in uh, France and Wyoming, they actually find survivors. Yeah. And they're speaking this gibberish that can't figure out. As the the movie goes on. Uh, it's figured out that the asteroids were purposefully flung at the earth yeah. as a way of communicating, which is kind of a weird way to communicate. Yeah. Hi. Hey, hi, I'm going to throw a rock at you. And, uh, more coming, I mean, they, the, the scientists figure out that 
all three hit in on the same latitude or longitude, one of the two. Yeah. Um, that it was purposeful, and they start piecing things together and figure out that it is an alien, not an alien invasion, but it's alien contact. Yeah. And some more come, some more asteroids come in over the North Pole. U.S. goes up, shoots them down. Yeah. Yay, got them. Yeah. Well, then that just makes the aliens mad. Yeah. Because they're like, well, we were trying to be nice and just throw rocks at you yeah. and you're nuking us. Um, because then there are several more that are lobbed at, uh, yeah. I think, at uh, Beijing, Moscow, and Washington, D.C. Yeah. And those all get taken out. So everybody thinks, yay, it's okay. Then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose. They just start lobbing. Yeah, there's just everything. too many to count. Yeah. And you finally find out um, toward the end, the scientists figure out that the girl and the Frenchman, because they never find anybody from China. Yeah. But the girl and the Frenchman are speaking pieces of the uh, greeting that is on the record on the oh, yeah. uh, the Voyager yeah. spacecraft. So apparently, and it's one of my favorite parts of this whole thing, the aliens found it and said, okay, well, there's this thing on here. We're going to lob a rock at you telepathically get some of your people to talk and then you'll know, Hey, we found yeah, it. Yeah. You know, here we are. And, and it's basically, it's the part about the 146 or 47 countries, but the girl and the guy are both speaking just pieces of it yeah. until they finally put it all together and figure it out. Yeah. End of the movie is you're, you have the, the newscaster who's been with us the whole time saying, this is it. We'll stay on as long as we can. Yeah. And then you start hearing, you know, this is, this base, you know, we got stuff incoming, you know, we're, we've lost communication with this place, this place, this place. Movie ends. Um, again, this movie freaked people out. Yeah. Uh, to the point, <laughs> my one of my favorite stories about this is apparently in Arkansas, it was on, there were some CBS affiliates that wouldn't run it. Huh. They, I guess they maybe looked at it and were like, no, no, we're not doing yeah. this. But a few of them did, and people were calling the local ABC and NBC affiliates and going, "Why aren't you reporting yeah. this news?" Yeah, because the the movie went so far as to their their little insignia for the news. It wasn't CBS, but it looked just close enough. Enough, yeah. And the uh, the reporter, the well, the main anchor. I don't recognize him, but he apparently uh, was an actual yeah. newscaster. Um, I can't remember his name. Is Sandy something? Yeah. Um, and there were. Let's see. Uh, yeah, I think it's up a little. Huh. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever his name was. <laughs> Sandy. His name was Sandy. Um, at any rate, he, he is talking with this uh, <laughs> this astronomer or scientist who is will later become in later years Malcolm in the Middle's mom. Yeah. And then uh one of the reporters is John Delancey, who Star Trek fans will know as Q. Yeah. He'd already been on Star Trek before this came out. So if you're watching it and you'd watch Star Trek, you'd been you would have been like, oh I know him. Okay, I know him. But for those of us in the LA area, yeah. There was one uh, reporter, her name was uh, Bree Walker. Bree Walker, and she was a CBS yeah. local news anchor. I remember her. And she stars in this along with, with the others. And she she finds a little girl. She's you know at the the crash site and stuff. So that kind of added a little bit of if you weren't if you didn't know who Jane Kras, Krasowski Krasinski. Yeah. I can't, I'm, Normally better with names. And John Delancey, if you didn't know who they were and you saw her, you might be like, oh, wait a second. Yeah, she's you know, a real reporter. Yeah, because she, she uses a real name, too. Yeah. And this Sandy dude uses his also. Um, So it, you could kind of see where you could get a little bit of confusion. Yeah. Um, It also, though, uses um, uh, accelerated time. Yeah. Things like that because... It just, you know, it's supposed to happen over on Halloween and it was released on the 30th instead yeah. of the 31st. So little things you figure it out. But for the most part, it was done really well and yeah. to the point where 
you could see people being a little freaked out Definitely, by it. Yeah. yeah, this was my – of my homework ones, which were the, the three that we've now <laughs> talked about, this was definitely by far my favorite one. Yeah. yeah Even though was, I think it was actually the longest of the three too, but it actually held my attention a lot better yeah. than the others. And I hadn't seen it. So I actually watched this one uh, as you were. I mean, not with you, but yeah. at the same time. Um, but yeah, it was it was really well done. Yeah, it was. The next one though – is one of my favorites only because it scared the crap out yeah. of me when I saw it. And this, yeah, the next one scares. I had, I actually did not watch this as homework for this time. I guess I just ran out of time, or maybe you were just too maybe I was just a little bit too scared. <laughs> but we'll just say I ran out of time. But um, yeah, the next one is is my favorite of the of the ones we watched. And it is, doggone it! I cannot get the stupid that one right there. Um, that there one. There we go. That one. Okay. Alien abduction incident in Lake County. How are your mounds candy bars? They are tasty. I guess you don't feel like a nut today. <laughs> not today. No, not at all. <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to sneak it in while you're talking. Yeah, I'll talk. Uh, alien abduction incident in Lake County. <sighs> in, in Australia, it was called alien abduction, the McPherson tape. And there is actually kind of a reason for the McPherson tie-in. Okay. Um, I did see this one when it came out. You did? And like I said, it scared the crap I, out of me. I've seen this, but not in the last year, probably a year or two ago. Well, I not only saw it, I also saw it by myself. Oh, that's good. At home. And yeah. Yeah. So basically, as the title implies, this is an alien, alien abduction movie in Lake County. Yes. Um, it's a found footage kind of movie. You have this kid who got a new uh, uh, home video, video camera, uh, yeah, video camera, and he's recording the family's Thanksgiving dinner and being obnoxious with a camera and stuff. Yeah. That's what you do. That's what you do. <laughs> and things start happening outside. There's, uh, you know, there's power outages. There's explosions. There's things going on, and. At some point, it's been a while since I've seen it, but I know at yeah. some point they go outside, they find that the the battery of the truck's been melted. Um, they're seeing seeing creatures, yeah, and then it turns into a full on, you know, there it, it's kind of like signs almost. Yeah, they're trying to they're being attacked by these. Yeah, aliens. and as you go on through the movie, I mean, he's the kids videotaping. Um, what is his name? Tommy. Yeah. He's videotaping the whole thing and then you start seeing more and more stuff happening. Like at one point, everybody kind of goes into a trance. Yeah. Um, another one, I think they all end up with like a burn mark on the back of their neck. Yeah. And uh, after the end of the movie, because it really freaked me out, after then they show kind of a, have you seen me? Yeah. Kind of pictures, you know, milk carton pictures. And the little girl, I think her name was Rosie. Her picture is noticeably altered. Yeah. Her eyes are, are bigger. Not like anime huge. Yeah. But just bigger just and darker. Bigger enough. than normal. Yeah. And so you're led to believe these people have been abducted before and she's probably a, yeah. a hybrid of some sort. Yeah. The very end of the movie, though, is the worst because everything's going on. They're in the, the aliens are in the house. They're they're scaring tormenting everybody yeah and then we get the kind of before blair witch blair yeah. witch scene of him holding the camera and like i'm scared i don't know what's going on i yeah. don't know what's going to happen and then he freezes and drops the camera yeah you know he drops the camera the way it falls it's looking toward an open a door that's open and the door gets pushed and an alien comes out yeah and i about lost it when yeah. i saw that when i was and it's still gives me yeah. the creeps when I think about her to watch it now. Um, this was also, it was given a, a warning beforehand, I believe. I th I think they did it at commercial breaks too. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the maker was like, no, I don't want to do that. One thing that helped give this a little bit of sense of credibility is they, it's found footage, so... It wasn't like it was happening right then. Yeah. So they had, um, quote unquote, experts that they were talking to. Yeah. 
but they did get one actual UFO expert, Stanton Friedman. That, you've, that we've all heard of before. Yeah. yeah. A big guy, big bushy eyebrows, yeah. died recently, poor guy. Yeah. Um, they basically didn't tell him they were making uh, a, a fictional movie. So he wasn't acting. He wasn't acting. Yeah. So he's like, yeah, this, you know, this stuff happens and this looks real and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And years later, I mean, he... he Kind of gives gave it a laugh, I guess, but I think initially he was kind of like probably well, kind of mad. You? yeah yeah you, know, you made me look like an idiot yeah. Um. Originally, this movie there's there's a long story before it, but basically the uh, guy who created it originally uh, Dan uh, Dean or yeah Dean sorry it's far away uh, Alioto yeah. Um, he had he was kind of like Dawson on Dawson's Creek for those of you who remember that he was like an amateur filmmaker. I haven't watched Dawson's Creek, but I'll listen. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know you watch. I'm a man. Every episode, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hurt you now. Um, anyway, he was an amateur filmmaker, had gotten some some equipment and made a low budget version of this movie. Oh. He made it all himself. He and his friends made it. Um, you know, he was basically the cameraman, you know, and, and the kid and everything yeah. and tried to sell it. And I think initially it didn't go anywhere. And then somebody finally was like, well, yeah, we'll buy it. Sure. Yeah. And then they, when they were going to make a bigger budget movie, supposedly the, uh, facility that had the storage, the, the storage facility that had the film, that he had sold it to, to the people that he had sold it to, burned yeah. down mysteriously. Wow. So he thought, well, nothing's going to happen to this. You know, yeah. they were going to come of it. Oh, well, live and learn. And he went on and did other things. Well, years later, he gets a, a call and it's like, uh, did you make this movie or is this your yeah. movie? And it was from people at UFO conferences because it had been found. Wow. And it had been taken to be real. real yeah so people are at ufo conferences and they're like oh look at this is abduction video yeah. blah 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 and so he was invited to go and then he explained no this is mine i made it it's yeah. not real and i guess upn finally approached him about making it and then somewhere along the line uh the guy he was working with the the, the head at upn or higher up Got fired, and he got booted off the movie, but they had already made most of the movie, so they were yeah. like, well, let's finish it up. Yeah. And they finished it up the way that we see it, and didn't bother with you know telling Stanton Friedman and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually really interesting if you ever get the chance to to look it up and read read about it. Um, but yeah. Yeah, this one scared me too, and like I said, I haven't seen it in a couple of years, but I will eventually have the courage to watch it. I need to watch it like in broad daylight with like the windows open yeah. and birds tweeting outside and stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, the, it's one of those things for me that for some reason these get to me. Like the, I mean, obviously if there was really a nuclear war going on, that would terrify me. Yeah. But the movies about it don't really scare me. Yeah, but but always did me. <laughs> but this, the alien abduction things always get to me. I, I think of them as like the ultimate monsters because they're, you know, almost any other monster, there's sort of some way around it or you have mm -hmm. some chance. But aliens just seem so overwhelmingly powerful. I mean, if they make it here, they're already so much more powerful than us than we have that we have no chance. Yeah, at all. I think we discussed this once before. Yeah. You don't believe in them, but you're terrified. But of I'm them. terrified <laughs> of them. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they exist, but they're the scariest thing in the world to me. Well, the way the movie was made. They got around the accelerated time thing by saying, this is found footage. We're just showing you clips. Yeah, you're showing clips, which it works a lot better than the others. Yeah. Then, yeah, this is happening. Because that's totally believable. If it's found footage and it's just somebody filming something happening, what if it's five hours long? You don't want to watch a five-hour movie. So yeah. they, they might just be cutting it down, and that's totally believable. Yeah, and it, it just made it work. Yeah. And the, the one thing that I kept having trouble – it didn't make me totally non-believe, but it gave me a little bit of uh, a reason to pause. Yes. Uh, I thought the kid who played Tommy was oh, yeah. Danny Cooksey. Yeah. Because he looks kind of like him. He's actually a kid or a guy named Christian Eyre. Yeah. Um, but I kept watching going, well, this is Danny Cooksey. Yeah. So it can't be real. This is a movie. And at the end... 
they do show credits yeah. up to and including the kids who play the aliens. Yeah, yeah. So if people didn't pay attention all the way to the end, well, it's their own fault. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of, in fact, all of these, because they had actors, they all would have credits at the end. And if you just paid attention, yeah, you'd see that at the end that, okay, well, you know, this wasn't real. Yeah. So. I wonder, um, yeah. So these are, well, because Kevin didn't do the alien abduction. Yeah, I know. Those were four of the five, well, four of the ones that I told Kevin to watch for yeah. homework. And we have one more, but we're about at our break time. Yep. So we will go ahead and take a quickie break and we will come back with, with our the, future presentation. With our future presentation. Ha <laughs> ha. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave announcement to make. Incredible as it may seem, both the observations of science and the evidence of our eyes lead to the inescapable assumption that those strange beings who landed in the Jersey farmlands tonight are the vanguard of an invading army from the planet Mars. The battle which took place tonight at Grover Mills has ended in one of the most startling defeats ever suffered by an army in modern times. 7,000 men armed with rifles and machine guns pitted against a single fighting machine of the invaders from Mars. 120 known survivors. The rest strewn over the battle area from Grover's Mill to Plainsboro, crushed and trampled to death under the metal feet of the monster, or burned to cinders by its heat ray. Welcome back. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying your Halloween. Yep, we're having fun doing this, as we usually do. Not the Jude be able to tell by the tone of my voice right now yeah apparently well, we're always for some reason we're always really tired by the time we do this i know we've it's... usually eaten a big meal and then watched a movie yeah then, maybe yeah. we need to revise our schedule yeah. a little bit <laughs> do it early in the morning when we're both awake yeah okay well we have gone over alternative three special bulletin without warning and alien abduction yep. incident in lake county Right smack dab in the middle of those, though, is my absolute favorite one. Yeah. And much like Monos, the story behind it is even more fascinating than yeah. the, the actual product. But the product was pretty good if you go into it not knowing what you're watching. Yeah. Uh, the movie we're talking about is another BBC movie called Ghost Watch from October uh, 1992. In fact, Halloween On night. Halloween, yeah. 1992. Uh, for those of you not familiar with how BBC shows work, uh, they have a lot of, uh, kind of just shows, not Twilight Zone, I want to say, uh, they're series, but they're, it's not like, okay, well this week, you know, A and B do this and next week A and B will do oh, this. Oh yeah. It's, it's a new thing each it's time. It's a new thing each week. Yeah. yeah. And this was one of those, um, it basically centers around there's a, a house in uh, a suburb of London and there's poltergeist activity going on. Yeah. And it centers around these two little girls and their mom who can't do anything about it. Yeah. So uh, the the uh, BBC decided to send out a news team to go on Halloween night and see if they could find anything out about it and and – they get some experts in and stuff like that. And, yeah. And just it, it initially starts out really slow, really dry. Nothing's going on. They're giving you the background of what's yeah. been going on. Um, but nothing happens. And, and, and it's it's also kind of like a – it's there's a, there's a fun feel to it. Like, hey, let's have fun with this. It's Halloween. Yeah. and Yeah, because nobody's taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's kind of like, oh, It's yeah, just like, hey, let's do house. something for Halloween. Here yeah. you go. Yeah. And they have four – uh, British viewers of the time, they have um, media celebrities, news celebrity, news anchors and reporters yeah. and stuff, television celebrities. Uh, Michael Parkinson was is the host, and he was apparently a big deal there. Yeah, um, and several other people. Uh, you had Sarah Green, Mike Smith, Craig Charles, um, Jillian Bevan. Oh, she was the actually the actress who played the oh, okay. the doctor. Um, oh yeah. But okay. the, these four were people that people that uh, viewers would see every day on different shows. Yeah. On the news, uh, Sarah Green was uh, the host of a children's show. Oh, okay. And 
Uh, her husband was Mike Smith. He was another, I think he was in the news or something like that. Like Craig Charles was just obnoxious. Yeah, he was. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we have uh, Michael Parkinson, Mike Smith, and this Dr. Uh, Lynn Pascal who are in the studio. And they, Mike Smith is manning the phone bank. And yeah. that will come into play here in a minute. And then Sarah Green and Craig Charles are sent to the house. And they show the setup, show how everything's working, yeah. you know, the cameras they use and stuff. And then they flash a phone number. And the phone number is, was, I think it still is, the actual number to call into the BBC. Yeah. And so they said, if you all have uh, any ghost stories to tell us or any experiences, please call in and tell us and we'll, you know, we'll put you on the air. Yeah. So as they're going, we see... Uh, in the, early on, we see a uh, video of the two girls in bed, and then poltergeist activity starts. Things start flying. Yeah. Uh, they hear banging and stuff, and they run out. Well, a few minutes later, somebody calls, and you know, I'll try not to get into too much detail on this, but this is just to give you an idea. Yeah. Somebody calls in and says, hey, I saw something in that, that, in that footage, clip. in yeah. that clip. So they run it back, and they're watching it, and you see the first time you see Mr. Pipes. Yeah. yeah, and we'll explain who he is in a minute. Um, but the two people in the studio, they're like, oh, we don't see anything. And so then they run it back, they rewind it, and they come back, and he's not there. Yeah. So that will be a running theme throughout the whole the whole production is yep. that Pipes shows up in the background. Well, Mr. Pipes is what the girls called the banging. Yeah. Um, they would hear, uh, like, pipes banging and stuff in the house. And the mother said, well, it's it, just, was just, it was just the it's pipes. It's just the pipes, yeah. And so they called him Mr. Pipes after a while. Um, as it goes on, activity starts picking up. Um, at one point, the older daughter, um, I think Sarah was her name, I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but the older daughter is found faking the banging on the pipes. Yeah. And so Michael Parkinson is like, this isn't real, we've all been had, but... Dr. Pasco is still like, no, I've been studying this. I've been there. I've seen things. This is yeah, not. Yeah, she knows it's not always yeah. fake. She says this isn't indicative of, of what's going on. It's the kids trying to keep your attention. Yeah. And which is what the girl says to She goes, we, we're just giving you what you wanted. Yeah. Um, as we go on, though, you see pipes show up a few different places in reflections. And then uh, he's in the crowd at one point. Yeah. The one that, that got me the most was um, Dr. Baskell standing in front of this dark background, this yeah. black background, and she's li they're listening to the recording of the voices. And you just see pipes materialize just in blue, just yeah. kind of like Princess Leia hologram yeah. behind her. And if you're I, – I went into it when I watched it the first time, went to it knowing that he showed up in different places, but yeah. I purposefully didn't look into where – and when I saw that, it just made my blood freeze. Yeah, because yeah, you know it's fake, but it just it yeah. was perfectly done. So we go through the whole thing. Hijinks ensue. Um, eventually, uh, Sarah Green is actually pulled into uh, a, a basement door. This creepy disappears. under the stairs closet type yeah. thing. Yeah, it disappears. Um, Things start. There's there's this wind starts up in the the studio, and yeah. then it's at the house, and basically Doctor Pasco goes, "We've created a séance. Yeah. He's he's in the machine. He's yeah. everywhere now." And then at the end, Michael Pack uh, Michael Parkinson's walking around, and he's like, "There's nobody here. I don't know what cameras on." And he walks at one of the cameras, and you can only see his mouth. Yeah. And one of uh, Mister Pipe's trademarks was to recite nursery rhymes. Yeah. And so as he's standing there, he starts yeah starts reciting. So he's sort rhyme. of possessed by yeah. him or something. Yeah, and then boom, done. Yeah. yeah. So you, if you watch long enough, you get the list of credits, and you yeah. see that it was all actors other than the the celebrities that were in. Yeah, it. but they're still acting, but they are still known celebrities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It would be basically like if we if somebody did a, a show and they had Barbara Walters, Geraldo yeah. Rivera. And uh, Anderson Cooper, but they're kind of playing themselves. In a yeah, way. they're playing themselves. Yeah. But you that and that draws you into it. Yeah, and and kind of suckers you in. Uh, there was a lot of trouble after this. Yeah, um, 
<laughs> the the creator Stephen Volk, he was uh, he was threatened with legal uh, legal charges. Uh, people were calling in and saying that one person, their son, actually killed himself. Huh. He uh, he was special needs. He, they said he the the mother said he had the uh, the mentality of about a twelve or thirteen year old. And when he saw it, he went and killed himself. He said, "I don't want to." Yeah. be possessed and stuff on a lighter note another woman apparently contacted the bbc and said you owe me money to clean my husband's pants he soiled uh, himself yeah um a lot of kids uh had ptsd basically yeah after watching it because they showed it when the the screen one series came on it was before what they called the 9 p.m watershed which okay i guess the watershed because they can show a little they do show a little bit more and can get with yeah. the language on British television. So I think the watershed, if I understand correctly, is basically this is where the adult stuff starts. Yeah. So in 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 fact, um, Parkinson uh, references that when the mother calls, the one mother calls in, says my my husband touched the table and it exploded, yeah. and the kids won't stop. And he's like, "Well, this is past their bedtime. It's past the yeah. watershed. You shouldn't be having them up anyway." Blah blah blah. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was just things like that. People, people really, really took it seriously and Volk issued an apology and, you know, yeah. kind of smooth things over, but it was not allowed to be shown on British television. I don't, I think maybe within the last few years, they finally allowed it to be shown. Yeah. Um, but it was just, nope, we're not doing this. He originally had wanted to do a three-part series mm -hmm. on and basically make it like a ghost hunter show but yeah but make it obviously fictional yeah and they said no you only got one show and he's like all right okay. well, let's do this yeah <laughs> and it it just took everybody by surprise the phone number again like i said it was the actual bbc phone number yeah and when you could get through you would get a message that would say the show is fictional. It's not really happening. Yeah. But please tell us your ghost story. Yeah. And the phone system crashed. Yeah. And so people were thinking, oh, something's gone on. Something, you know, something's happening. And that just added to the to the hysteria and the hype. Yeah. And then with everything going on, and it's just done so subtly, you know, it in, to the point of almost being boring. Yeah. At first, because I watched it with with other people, and they're just like yawn. Yeah. But once things start ramping up, it's it's awesome. Um, yeah. What? Did you, well, I mean, I, I mean, you watched it going in knowing basically. I, I what knew we it was going to be fake, watch. and I've heard about it before, but I've never watched it before this time. But yeah, I, I think um, I think it was really well done. I can imagine now. I, I have no connection to the people. I'm not. I'm not from there, so these aren't well-known yeah. celebrities to me. I mean, you know, so I didn't know who any, who any of them were. But I can imagine, you know, if if that were my country and I recognize these people from TV, from normal TV shows, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, it, at the beginning, it's taken just sort of as a like a hey, let's have a fun Halloween spooky yeah. thing, you know. And I can totally imagine if I were to watch it, thinking like, yeah, this is this is kind of fun, you know. That's that's funny. That's funny. And then I think, I think up until when things start happening in the actual studio, um, I'm kind of 50, 50 on ghosts, whether I believe in yeah. them or not. But, but I mean, I, I still was in, I think I could see myself being into it and thinking this is real. It's at this point I can't, cause I, before I ever you, saw it, I knew for sure knowing, it, was, it yeah. was fake and I kind of knew what to look for a little bit and all yeah. that. But yeah, it was really well done. I, I think it could be pretty tricky if if you were from there and you kind of knew these people and you're watching it that night, I can totally see it. Well, and it was even, it even had a little bit of, uh, the, you know, like the alternate reality game kind of thing that like lost had yeah. and stuff in that, uh, Sarah green was the host of a children's show yeah. in addition to other things. And on the show the day before she said, Hey, I'm going to be on this, this ghost watch tomorrow night. So be sure to watch me. So yeah. she had told all these kids, kids yeah. you know, so it'd be like Mr. Rogers going, well, I'm going to be on this show and kids yeah. would fall in to watch it and then have the crap scared out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, it, it's just really well done. Yeah. Really. I mean, cause 
because you've got again it's treated as as fluff yeah and it's just yeah it's a halloween let's just do this and parkinson he's just full on i don't believe it in this it's yeah. garbage and stuff and you know, i mean even to the point of pretty much just calling out the doctor and going look you've seen it's yeah. not true you know why do you keep going on with this yeah. and she's like no 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 there is something going on yeah um it it just it was great also i, I don't know if it would have helped people it is based heavily on what's called a case called the enfield poltergeist mm. it's almost exactly and volk used that as his basis yeah. um since this was 94 uh 92 92 sorry um and the uh, enfield happened in 77 i don't know if there would have been a lot of people who put it two and two yeah, together probably not but maybe there was there were enough because it was it was a big thing okay. um but then there were other things like at the i had read one review of it it said at the end with the uh the possession in the studio yeah that it was just silly okay you know to that point and it is you know when you're kind of you're like really yeah you know, now you're all of a sudden, you know, spouting nursery rhymes and stuff. So there are things in all of these that could tip you off that you're not exactly watching yeah. the real thing. But I can see, especially in this one, because it does use accelerated time, kind of. Yeah. But not in such a way that that's so glaringly obvious. Like, yeah. in, like in Special Bulletin, where it starts out in the daytime and then it's nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. This one, it starts out in the evening, and the show's only an hour and a half long. I think. Yeah. Um, and it it flows smoothly enough to where you don't feel like, oh, you know, well, this happened, and oh, we're an hour later. Yeah, yeah. So it it kind of yeah kind of helped it along. Um, okay, you said you hadn't seen any of these when they came oh except for uh, alien abduction you know let me say one more thing about before we move on to overall yeah one more thing about ghost watch one thing that really shocked me that i didn't know going in was how creepy uh mr pipes is oh I like know. he's not just some creepy your typical creepy ghost he's actually like a child molester yeah because they, they give him this yeah this background of, of and that kind of surprised me i'm like wow I, i'm surprised they went that dark sort of yeah you know yeah and that and then the look of him too, when you see yeah. him, just the actor in his makeup. Yeah, he's pretty looks, scary. Yeah, it looks bad enough. But when you see him, because every time you see him, it's just a glimpse. Yeah, you you um, almost think that did I see that? Yeah, and of course back then you wouldn't be rewinding. Yeah, well, and you wouldn't have known to be looking for. Yeah, it. that's true. When you're watching it now, you, if you don't know where the spots are, you're probably a lot of times going, "Did I see him there? Did I see him there? Yeah. Did I see him there?" But I think the only time we really get a good view and it's still just a silhouette is the first time in the bedroom. Yeah, that one, that one, I, I didn't notice it when we were watching it. But I, yeah, yeah, I thought that was kind of funny because you were like, what? Yeah. I didn't see it. I'm like, it was right there. Yeah. Man, it was huge. Yeah. And the the apparition showing up behind the doctor, it's just, it's blue, but it's yeah. obvious. That one I that saw it as it happened. And the others all, like when you see them in the, in the, uh, the little doorway closet little thing. closet thing yeah it's just really quick yeah you know it's just a quick flash that one was cr pretty scary to me too because you you kind of like you know how scary movies are you know when you're about to see something yeah. scary you kind of knew you were going to see something but you see so little of it that you're like okay that's yeah. freaked me out yeah the, the one that that got me aside from the the apparition yeah. is when they're flashing through the room yeah and you see it and then they go back yeah and it is not there yeah. and it's just like Okay, I know yeah, how that they one did it, but yeah, yeah, that one got to me too. So they're, yeah, yeah, they're just it just was well done. Yeah, it was done. <laughs> now looking at these though, it, put yourself going your little time machine. Okay, Kevin, time machine. Yeah. Um, could you have been fooled by any of these? And I'm now. Are you saying that I'm at? I'm at the time watching it live on TV or okay, whatever. Okay. Right? Yeah, we'll say. Um, because you would have been kind of young for alternative three. Yeah. Let's. But even if you could just put me back in, I'm my age right now. Yeah, put back you back your age and not knowing. Okay. I mean, it's kind of hard to not know it now. Yeah. But yeah. If you were to watch, say, alternative three. Yeah, alternative three. 
I have a feeling I would not have believed that one. So even though it was on a science show yeah. that you watch, a, a, a real, reputable yeah. science show, yeah. you would have been like, mm. I mean, it's hard to, it's so hard to say. Um, I mean, that one might be believable just because I do, I do believe, while I don't believe in aliens, I do believe that we, our government and other governments can do a lot more than we know that they mm -hmm. can do. I do believe that. So that one, in that case, I could see myself possibly believing it. Yeah. Okay. Um, the the one I would not believe would be special bulletin. That one, because of some of the same things you already said, that yeah. wouldn't have been because I would have just said like this. It's not making. There'd sense. be more going on than this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't have twenty four hour news then, but we had telephones, and if something that major were going on, it would have been on all three. Networks. It would have been on every network, and, yeah. and the local authorities would have been said, "Yeah, I know it's on the other side of the country, but." But this is going on, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, without warning. Without warning. That one, I would say maybe initially. Yeah, at the beginning. It, except for the fact that it, the same thing with Special Bulletin is it wasn't a known news yeah. outlet. But I think for me at the beginning, if I would have even wanted to watch the movie. Yeah, I don't think I would have been watching a Lonnie Anderson movie. Yeah, but. Well, because it starts off... It, the Lonnie Anderson part, it's not like it starts off without warning. And doo, 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 doo. Yeah. It's without warning. Oh, I walked down my wife cheating. Yeah. You know, and, and so it's kind of like you're in the middle of the movie. Yeah. So I I don't know if I had been watching that. Yes, the news break. Because we didn't used to have, I mean, like on the news now, it's always, oh, breaking news. Yeah. You know, there's a bear in somebody's pool. Well, yeah. That's not breaking, that's not breaking news. news. Yeah. yeah. And it used to be when you got breaking news, it was like, oh, something big is going on. Something huge is happening, yeah. So I think this could have gotten me Maybe, yeah. right at the beginning. But then later on, again, going to the, well, if the whole world's being bombarded, yeah. where, you know, why isn't this on all the news? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Same, I agree on that one. Same thing. Um, alien abduction, well, we already both said yeah. we, we fell for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Ghost Watch, um, yeah, I think I would have, I would have gone along with it had I not seen any, yeah. any uh, disclaimers or anything like that beforehand. I think, I think it would have gone with it except for, the, I mean, obviously the beginning, it, you could not believe it because it's just fluff at the beginning. Yeah, that, that's a real show that someone could have really. Done. Yeah, yeah. I think I would have stuck with it maybe until. I think, like I said, once the studio st stuff started happening, that just seemed way too over the top for me. at the end. So yeah. you would have been the I would have way. been pretty close to the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, we we were discussing it before we recorded. Yeah. Could this be done now? Yeah. And I was... I think the general consensus is it'd be really hard to do it on TV. Yeah. You'd have to do it in a different way. You couldn't... Because of 24-hour news, like, like we were saying before... Nowadays, if something were happening in, was it South Carolina? Yes. You would know about it everywhere in the world. Yeah. Well, almost everywhere in the world. Yeah. Not, yeah. But, and then the found, found footage thing, for years, that was sort of, I mean, I think we were all tricked by that kind of stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. But now that it's sort of become a thing, it's a little bit harder to trick. Yeah. I mean, you're almost immediately, when you hear about found footage, you're like, okay, this is probably fake. Yeah, I think Blair Witch was the last one to be able to pull that off. Yeah. And it didn't last too long, but it did have a lot of people. Yeah, people fooled. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we're just too connected now. It would have to be some new idea that we we probably can't think of right now, or else we yeah. we do it ourselves. And I had thought of a couple that had happened recently, though. That oh. you know, I can't think of what they were. But it was more. Uh, it was more internet information kind yeah. of stuff, not. I mean, because this, yeah, you just... It would have to be internet-based at this point, I think. Yeah, because and it, the networks would run too much of a risk of being sued. Yeah, that's true. That now that everybody's so, you know, wimpy about so everything, happy, yeah. they would, you know, immediately yeah, try and try and take the, the network to task for it. Um, I don't know. I love these things. Yeah. And I'm glad that I at least got to see two of them when they happened. Yeah. I have never seen one when it happened, unfortunately. Yeah. It, it just, it's different because, I mean, I've studied up on these things. So I, you know, I know there's, there's more out there. Yeah. Um, not the least of which the 1938 War of the Worlds, which yeah. freaked everybody out. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I would, 
as much as they would have freaked me out watching them, yeah. I would have loved to have been able to say, oh, yeah, I saw that, it's, and it was done. It's worth the freak out of the time yeah. to be able to talk about it later. Yeah. So. Yeah. So which was your uh, which was your favorite out of these? Um, my th- which one would you suggest people go and check out? I still think the alien abduction one is the scariest. I don't know. Necessarily. It depends on who you are, if you f- would find it believable. But yeah. to me, that's the one. I don't know that I'll watch, except for in situations like this where I'm going to talk yeah. about it. I don't know if I'd watch any of these just for fun again, except for the alien abduction one. I can imagine yeah. watching that over and over and over. And even that, I have. that's the best one. Yeah. Uh, it, as far as sucking you in. Yeah. Um, I can only watch the, the end part just yeah. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> it still freaks me out. Yeah. Yeah, even though I know it's 100% written and fake, it still scares me. Cause yeah. I just have this, like, fear of of alien abduction or, you know. Being probed. Yeah, probed. Yeah. yeah. Again. Probably good. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about that right yeah. now. Um, so there you go. Yeah, there we go. So, uh time, kind of time we we're, got We're pretty here. much around the time... We, that our normal podcast would be. Okay. We can go a little longer if we feel like it. Uh, I was trying to think of something more, but I don't want to beat the dead, you know, yeah. beat that old dead horse. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll have a little blip as a, like a little side episode of saying happy Halloween on Halloween as we're giving away there candy here where I am right now at Jay's house. There we go. Maybe I'll bring this little recorder and we'll, we'll record a little bit of the giving out candy. There we go. If that doesn't seem too weird to people. Yeah. Oh, well, it'll be fun for us. Why are you recording my child? Yeah. You'll hear our last words. Yeah. Some, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, in case we don't see you on Halloween, yeah. have a happy Halloween. Yeah. Uh, don't take anything too seriously you see on TV. Yeah. Always check the credits at the end. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and and make sure there are no uh, known actors playing reporters on, yeah. on your yeah. TV shows. So there you go. Yeah. Until then, until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye. This is Orson Welles, ladies and gentlemen. Out of character, to assure you that the War of the Worlds has no further significance than as the holiday offering it was intended to be. The Mercury Theater's own radio version of dressing up in a sheet and jumping out of a bush and saying boo. Starting now, we couldn't soap all your windows and steal all your garden gates by tomorrow night, so we did the best next thing. We annihilated the world before your very ears and utterly destroyed the CBS. You will be relieved, I hope, to learn that we didn't mean it and that both institutions are still open for business. So goodbye, everybody.